All right, the final thing I'd like to show you is uh, on the mantle above me. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece. It's an, a Christmas Joys uh, truck poster. These were attached to the side of the tr the the wagon posters. They were uh, attached to the side of the wagon uh, every uh, month. They had a new one that was put up. This one was for Christmas. This one has never been uh, put up on a truck or a wagon. It's an absolutely gorgeous piece. This came out of the collection of Wayne W. Getz. And it, it, it was never uh, hung. And we were fortunate enough to acquire it from him. It has, as Charlie told you earlier, it has gold dust blown on it. Uh, this came straight out of the art department at Nabisco, where they blew the gold dust on it. This one, like I said, was never uh, hung on a, tr on a truck or a wagon. It has the four products at the time. It's dated 1924. The four products that they were trying to advertise for Christmas. There again, you, we've talked about Barnum's Animal Crackers. There was also Nabisco Sugar Wafers. These are these four products, Log Cabin Brownies and Alphabets, were made at the time and used in their advertising to attract children at Christmas time. And if you'll notice the strings on the Barnums, like I said before, the Barnums and the Log Cabin Brownies were used to hang on the tree. The kids would get them Christmas morning, just like they would their stockings filled with nuts and candy and fruit. Uh, the sugar wafers, traditional Christmas uh, gift giver as well. This is a beautiful, beautiful poster. Uh, we were so fortunate uh, that Wayne allowed us to get this from him. Uh, it's a beautiful picture. We, uh, it is framed. Uh, the frame itself, uh, when we had it framed, it's so large. And there again, that's one of the give giveaways. It was so large that they had to use crown molding off of an antique Victorian house to frame this picture. Uh, there is no, they did not have enough uh, wood in a tr traditional type framing material to frame it. So they had to use something large and that's crown molding off of a, uh, the inside of a Victorian house. But it is absolutely a beautiful, beautiful piece. The reason why we wanted to show you this piece is that they are as well trying to reproduce this. We have seen some reproductions of this. The only problem, you will know that it is not the real thing because it is done in a smaller scale. This is one thing that they cannot enlarge and it's going to show the clarity. You're going to get, if this one is enlarged, uh, it's going to show very dull, dull colors. It's going to be very, uh, the, the crispness will not be in the picture. So the only way they can re reproduce this is to go smaller. And we have seen some smaller reproductions of this picture. And it has been on eBay. So the main thing with my segment in this video is to show some of the reproducing that is going on today. That's why we encourage anybody, if they have a question, contact us. We're, we'll investigate it as well as we can. And the majority of times you're going to find that reproductions are out there and buyers must be on top of this. They must be aware as to what's going on. It's a sad, sad thing to see, but it happens in every company. We're, we're not the exclusive company where this is going on. You have Coke reproductions, Pepsi, any company, any, any type of advertising, the majority of it is going to be in paper advertising. It's easier to do, but as a lot of people know, there are reproduction porcelain signs out there. There are reproduction metal tin signs out there. The main thing is always, if you can, buyer, please be aware, you can spot phonies. And it's, it's up to the individual. Please be aware that this is going on. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk on the video today.
Charlie? Yeah, Prissy, you can sit here with me. I'm going to get on his side. i got a few things to say. The first thing is, Prissy's done an excellent job. She was worried about this, but was she good? She was good. Once she gets started, she's, you can't stop her. This Santa poster is one of two that National Biscuit Company put out. I'm going to have to bend, bend down and they won't see it. It's one of two that was put out. The other one has, uh, what's the other one, Prissy? It's a little different design. You've seen them both. It is a different Santa Claus. He's uh, he's basically a, a, a different style Santa Claus. He really doesn't Claus. look as real as this one. This one lo looks really, really real, but it's 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 a, still a beautiful picture. Now, a lot of people have seen Coca-Cola collectibles. Maybe some of you watch and have Coke collectibles. They're absolutely gorgeous. They bring top dollar. We have some Coke pieces, too. But... Coca-Cola has nothing on National Biscuit Company. That Santa was first used at the turn of the century by National Biscuit Company. This poster was a wagon poster, not a truck poster. It's before 1924. It's the last year they had horse and wagons. We'll show you some stuff in our collection that will boggle your mind. We have the horse blanket. We have all that. We'll show you. We'll get into it. We'll go room by room, and when we get through, you're going to see a collection, we hope, that will help you understand how beautiful the, the history and the things that National Biscuit Company put out are. Now, I can guarantee you that it, that this piece right here, just like it, has been sold at Indy at the ad show for $350 to $400. You would not know that's a repro. Now, you might say, well, I really don't care if it's a repro. Well, here's what happens. Sometimes when you buy these things and you get stuck with them, you might buy this and decide, hey, I'm going to take it out of that frame because I want to see the back of it. Well, you open it up and it's a piece of paper. And you're just thoroughly, thoroughly uh, crushed. If you buy this and you find out it's a phony, if you, if you want to recoup your money, then you put it back in there and you sell it to somebody else. And when you sell it, it's original. Guy buys it thinks it's original. So this is what's bad about collecting. The paper of Firma is doing nothing but destroying the value of pieces that are real, like we just showed you. The good thing about National Biscuit Company is it's hard to reproduce our stuff. A lot of people don't know how to do it, and I'm not going to tell them how to do it because they might see the video. But anyone who's knowledgeable about, about the collecting field will not get burned. We have been one time. This piece here could burn you real easy. In fact, I'll just tell you this. This piece was offered to us for $95 framed. I had it sold for $390. I could not do that to them. I didn't know when I got it, because I got it from a, an older gentleman that worked for the company. Percy calls him the huckster. Good man. We just we don't want to go there. The bottom line is, when I found this, this wasn't real, I had to I, I emailed him and told him, no, I'm, like, I'm going to sell it to you. I'm going to send it back. I, I, I wouldn't rip anybody off, because I wouldn't want to rip me off. Now, so buyer beware on these things. Just a little, just a little uh, side information, and we're gonna we're gonna close it here. When when Wayne Getz sold his collection in 2006, 2006, 2006 at auction, Edwards Auction sold it. They're a big baseball Eferma uh, selling auction auction company. They sell a lot of baseball cards. Some of them bring two or three hundred thousand dollars. They they make some big bucks, but they sold. Wayne's collection. They were the collection was sold in groupings. Like uh, that picture, the original portrait that Prissy was showing you here. This piece here. They sold the original painting that was done by who? Prissy. What's his name? Frank Stanley. In about in the, the early forties, he did the print painting. They sold that original oil painting at that auction for over $8,000. It was the only one known to exist. That's only what he did, I guess, with this, with the boy. This is a copy of it. The one that made a copy of this didn't do the company any favors. Because they're putting this out and saying, this hung in the office of the president of National Biscuit Company in his office. Well, he didn't lie to us. Nobody lied to us. They did. Not this one. The original one that I said, said just sold for 8000 hung in there. The copy never hung in there. But you're getting the impression that this was in there. And it's not. It never was. This thing here is worth about 50 bucks if you want to hang it on your wall. It's a nice piece of, you know, but it's not real. We'll show you one that was done for Wayne when he retired. It's painted. It's beautiful. It's identical to the one that they sold. It's signed on the back by all the 
people that worked under Wayne when he was in New, in New Jersey at World Headquarters. One thing that sold at this collection by Edwards, uh, uh, among a lot of things that sold, I didn't, we didn't get a thing out of there. We didn't buy anything out of there. We got things through Wayne that, that if they'd have had, I don't know what they would have brought. They had a whole collection of candy labels, probably hundred. Mm -hmm. Original candy labels. Kennedy, they were beautiful. I've got pictures of every one of them in here I can show you. Wayne sent us pictures of every one years ago, and they're beautiful pictures. You'll see them. The man who got those paid about 4000 for them, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm just guessing. I don't have my catalog here. Now, if you paid 4000 for original candy labels that were done before the turn of the century, would you want somebody to take those and repro them? Say, take these and repro them, I don't care. That's what happened. The man who bought them loaned them to this guy that we're talking about, and he repro them. And they're flooded on the market. People don't know that original, that should have been protected, that the only ones that Wayne had protected all those years, that came from a, a man he knew in Missouri, the candy company. Yes. Where's that? St. St. Joseph? St. Joseph, Missouri. He worked, his dad worked there and they got him. They, J, Wayne saved them and had them. He, the guy bought them at auction, loaned them to somebody, he made copies of them and gave them back to him. Well, that has to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Because now there's repros of his stuff out there and he had the only ones. All right, that's just one example. We have in our collection, we were lucky to save it. This little boy, name was Gordon Steele. He was born in 1895, and when they took his photo, made his photo in Chicago in a print shop, on, and took it on glass negatives in 1901, he was actually six years old. In the other Cracker Barrel book, they said he was five, but he was six. Five going on six. They made five glass negatives of this little boy. One was given to the parents of, of Gordon. Frank and Pauline Steele got one. The other four went to Nabisco. Out of the four that Nabisco had and, and got, they only liked one of these glass negatives. The other three they didn't like. The other three were destroyed. So there were two that survived, and, and the only ones that survived. This little boy was paid a hundred, his parents were paid a hundred dollars for that image. Every advertisement, every piece of advertising with this little boy on it was made from this glass negative that was in the company's possession until probably the 1960s, maybe early 70s. Adolphus Green, who was the second president of National Biscuit Company, had that negative in his possession. He liked it. He picked it, and that's the one they used. He ran the company. That negative, the first year that they had and advertised this little boy and put him out, they spent two million dollars on advertising in 1901 for a new company from 1898. They put him on jars, they put him on bows, they put him on trolley cars, they put him in uh, truck posts, they put him everywhere. At, in 1901, this little boy, Gordon Steele, became the most recognized figure in America besides the President of the United States. That's how much Nabisco put into that little figure. In 2009, Mr. Guest passed away in 2007. Nine. Nine. His family had some of his things that he treasured, that he would not sell and kept, were given to us. One of the pieces that was given to us that we treasure, we have the original glass negative of this little boy that was made in 1901 in a, in a photographer's studio in Chicago who, who at one time Adolphus Green had in his possession and, and treasured. We have that negative. It's over 122 years old. No, 112 years old. 1914. 113 years old. Whatever. I'll get there. It's priceless. It's the Bell Telephone. The first Bell Telephone. It's the first Model T. It's the first piece of a really country store that was put out that's, that's surviving and we treasure that piece. We have eight other negatives too, glass, glass negatives 
of, of different people that they did, and I can tell you later, in with him, it's packed in his own box. So the stuff we've has been saved, we have some beautiful things to show you. The only thing we want to say out of what Prissy's done right here, and she's done an excellent job, uh, it all started because of her. I mean, I, I worked for the company for, for, what, six years before we were married? Five years? I never, I collect beer signs. I love that. was about it. We got out of that. So she started our collection. She's the reason we have it. She loves it. It's in every room of the house. Every room in this house has National Biscuit Company memorabilia and pieces on the walls. They are all 100% original. Nothing repro. We had one piece of repro. I felt sorry for the guy I bought it from because he, he was do, he's the guy that does all this. I bought it. <laughs> Percy hated it. Put it in the barn. Finally, I sold it at a barn sale to a guy who thought it was so beautiful. So, this is the history of the, of the repros that's been putting out, that have been put out. And if you know the history of the company, very little National Biscuit Company things can be repro, just paper or firma. Signs are marked, just like this one was, that Prissy had there a while ago. Uh, we, have the, we have original porcelain signs, they're beautiful. We'll show all this to you in the later video. So, you don't have to work, toys they can't repro, they had toys, they had dolls. These two dolls sitting in front of a man, I don't know if you still see them or not. I think you can because I had the, I know you can. I had the poster. These two came from Wayne's collection, 1914. Ideal Doll and Toy Company, Novelty Company, Brooklyn, New York. They're the junior and the little and the big sucker boy made from Gordon's image. They were put out their toys. They're, over, they're 100 years old this year. Happy birthday, you need a kid. They called this little boy the you need a kid or the you need a boy. On the right, next to Santa, is another one of the boys. This one on the right is the only surviving example we know of. We've collected for 40 years. We found him recently. We knew he was out there, but we never saw him. It is what they call a sleep eye and a walker. His eyes open and close, and as he walks when you can move his legs and he'll walk. He's the only one known to exist. He's priceless. He's beautiful. He looks porcelain. He's gorgeous. So that's the three there. We'll give you some more dolls and stuff when we walk you through the collection. We're doing this for two reasons. One is, I always told Mr. Guest, I never knew Wayne for a long time, and we got to know each other after about 1994. The finest gentleman I ever met, the finest individual you'd ever talk to, the most knowledgeable person that I've ever met in the history of National Biscuit Company. He spent over 40 years with them. Went from a sales rep in Texas to vice president of the company. I was a peon there, I was a sales rep, you know, I did my job and I did. I was good at what I did, but I never would thought I'd ever meet the vice president of the company, but I got to know him well. He got to calling me boy after he got to know me and never knew why, I just figured I was younger than him. But he called anybody boy that he really liked, because he was called boy when he was a little boy. So Mr. Guest is a reason to survive, and he had things that, that, have, that have been saved and we're lucky to have them, but the bottom line is... Uh, we, we want to do this because of, of Wayne and because we want to do something on, the, on, on what we have. When we die, all this information dies with us. When I'm dead and I'm cremated, all my knowledge of National Biscuit Company will die with me except what Prissy knows, and she knows a lot. Our son Dale is going to get most of our collection. He loves it. Chuck, care less. He's got a few pieces. We have two sons. If I don't put this on tape, me and Prissy, a lot of these things that Wayne schooled me in and told me about will be lost forever because once the people die who have them, they forget it. Wayne told me early on when I first met him, I was so impressed with this man. I mean, I just love this guy. He said, Charlie, or he called me boy, boy, when I'm through with you, I'm going to make you the most knowledgeable person about National Biscuit Company history that is living. And I told him at the time, I said, Mr. Guest, you got a, you got a big job there. You know, no, no more than anybody else about Nabisco. He said, you will when I get through with you. Well, he worked with me probably, what, 15 years? Mm -hmm. And I learned more from him than I could have ever dreamed of. Every time we put a newsletter out to call upon, he'd call me and say, Charlie, you did an excellent job. Beautiful job. He told me all about the pieces, where they were, who they came from, the candy pieces. He told me all about this. And in all this, he never told me he had the glass negative. I never knew he had it. Never dreamed he had it. He never told me he had all these candy labels. Prissy told him one day, this was funny. He called us, and Sophie was is, is Wayne's wife. And uh, they used to always on the speakerphone. We talked to him. He said, he said uh, Prissy said, Mr. 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 Wayne, I'd like to be your neighbor. 
And Wayne said, well, why would you want to be my neighbor, Prissy? He said, she said, so I can go through your house and your attic because I know you got things in there stored. He said, well, I'd love for you to be my neighbor. We never knew what he had. Never knew what he had. We knew he had a lot of stuff, but we didn't know what he had. And we had things he didn't have. Our collection's pretty much, if you want to say complete, it's never complete. I don't care what you're collecting. It's complete to what we know is out there. There's pieces we passed up, right, Chrissy? We wish we'd have bought. Uh, and I've told you that on the earlier video. But we love this, this collecting. Uh, you know, uh, I know that this is all smoke and mirrors. It's just temporary. We're living here. We have to have a hobby. This is it. There's more important things upstairs than what we have. Somebody asked me one time, you got a lot of insurance on that? I said, I got a 357. Smith, I got a 357 and a big dog. But, you know, you, you, it's, it's, it's fun to us. It's a hobby. And anybody that does repros really, really ticks us off. And we've known about, what, two? Mm -hmm. uh, this other one, gentleman passed away. And he was very knowledgeable about the company. Great, but he was reproing signs. Putting them in fire departments, whatever. All right, we're going to quit here. Uh, Prissy, has been great. I, I think if y'all have a question when you get this video eventually, you can email us. Uh, I'll give you my email address. It's Dolph Green, D-O-L-P-H Green, one word, Dolph Green, at AOL.com. You can email us and we'll get back to you. You can put in that National Biscuit uh, collection information. We had a show last year here in, in Louisville, and we had a lot of people come in from all the country, two different couples from California. We had three great days. They, they toured the house. You would, it would take you three days or more to see everything we have. We have so much. A lot of it doesn't show paper from it, for instance, easy store. So we're going to take you on the, 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 the majority of the collection. The next part when we do it, we'll be doing the signage and stuff, both of us. And you're going to see some absolutely beautiful pieces. This way, when we get through with this, this will be a pretty much complete, only to exist uh, information CD of a history that put the crackers in a box, National Biscuit Company. They started rather by accident almost, uh, and they picked the man who would lead them, who was a lawyer. He never wanted to be president of any company. He was, in fact, president of American Biscuit Company early in the century, right, Percy? Early 18, 1880s, he had American Biscuit Company. But when he took over National Biscuit, he didn't, he didn't do it, but he did it. And the thing that made him do what he did, he had two, two pieces that really turned it for the company and made Nabisco number one, still are. The first thing was the Cracker Barrel. It really bothered him. You know, that Cracker Barrel's unsanitary. You know, he'd go in, he, so he visited these old stores. He was a lawyer by trade. He'd visit these old stores and the Cracker Barrels were sitting there and they were by the old uh, uh, wood stoves and stuff and they had the Cracker Barrel back there with the, 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 uh, the Cracker, what do they call them things? The, the play on it. Checkerboard, 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 playing checkers. And they'd spit in the, in the, in the spittoons and the spit would wind up in the crackers and it was a nasty thing. Crackers would get stale from being in these open containers at that time. Uh, one lady came to the store one day and went up to the grocery and she said, I'm never going to buy another cracker in your store. And he said, ma'am, he said, what's the problem? He said, I, I take pride in my store. I, I keep it clean. I mean, it's it's best I can do. She said, well, I was back there by that cracker barrel. And a mouse jumped out of it. He said, I'll never buy cookies or crackers in here again. He said, there's no way a mouse was in there. He said, my cat sleeps in it every night. So a little humor that this was a bad thing, this Cracker Barrel. You need a biscuit, change it. They developed the inner seal process on, on a, one of the, a copywriter. We can tell you all about that. And this, 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 this system they, brought, they developed to put these crackers in a cello wrap in a box started the modern advertising and the model packaging for the company. It's been fun. We're going to quit now. We'll be back next time with uh, showing you some of our collection. And uh, I think you'll see at this next one, you'll see some pieces that you didn't know exist that are out there and National Biscuit had it all. We'll talk to you later. Bye.